What makes a molecule aromatic? Well, as we saw in the last video, simply alternating single and double bonds doesn't always make a molecule aromatic. The molecule cyclobutadiene, which has this pattern of alternating single and double bonds, is clearly not aromatic because it's far less stable than any acyclic conjugated system, for example. In this video, we're going to lay out the criteria for aromaticity, and by the end of this video, it will be very clear why cyclobutadiene is not an aromatic compound, while benzene, which has six carbons and six pi electrons, is. To decide whether a molecule or a substructure within a molecule is aromatic, we need to look at four conditions or criteria. And it's important that the molecules satisfy all four in order for it to be aromatic. The first is that the molecule must be cyclic. Acyclic compounds cannot be aromatic. The second condition is that the molecule must be fully conjugated. That is, the ring must consist solely of sp2 hybridized atoms so that there's a p orbital on every atom that can participate in pi bonding with the atoms next to it. Keep in mind here that if an atom bears a lone pair, the lone pair can be placed in a p orbital, and it will be placed in a p orbital if conjugation results from the placement of the lone pair in a p orbital. In other words, if placement in a p orbital enables the delocalization of a lone pair into adjacent p orbitals, then that atom will hybridize itself such that the lone pair ends up in a p orbital. Good structures to refer back to are the N3 and O2 atoms that we looked at in the previous lesson, where we saw lone pairs occupying p orbitals on those atoms. The third criterion is that the molecule must be planar. The ring must be planar so that it's fully conjugated. The key here really is that the molecule must be planar to ensure good overlap of the p orbitals on adjacent atoms. A great example of a molecule that is not planar and is therefore non-aromatic is cyclooctatetraene, which puckers itself so that some of the p orbitals can't overlap with each other on adjacent atoms. And finally, there's probably the most cryptic criterion of all, which has to do with the number of pi electrons in the molecule. Structures that have 4n plus 2 pi electrons are aromatic. And here, the value of n is often a source of confusion. This is just an arbitrary number. It's just a counting number that shows us the allowed numbers of electrons. It's either 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. And what it shows us is that the allowed number of pi electrons in an aromatic system is 2 when n equals 0, 6 when n equals 1, 10 when n equals 2, 14 when n equals 3, etc. The underlying reason why this 4n plus 2 pi electron rule exists is because these pi electron counts ensure completely filled bonding molecular orbitals and no electrons in the antibonding molecular orbitals. Very briefly, recall the pi orbital structure of benzene, which had this sort of hexagon-like shape. The six pi electrons in benzene ensured that all of the bonding molecular orbitals were completely filled and all of the antibonding molecular orbitals were empty. All aromatic hydrocarbons are going to have this orbital structure with one orbital at the bottom, degenerate orbitals all the way up to the second from the highest, and then one orbital at the top in energy. For this reason, two electrons in the bottom most, most orbital plus 4n for each of these degenerate bonding levels is going to lead to an aromatic situation. This is the origin of the 4n plus 2 rule. In fact, molecules that have only 4n pi electrons are especially unstable. And this is because their pi orbitals have either electrons occupying the antibonding orbitals or unoccupied slots in the bonding MOs. And both of these scenarios lead to a situation where the molecule is highly reactive and highly unstable. This situation is referred to as anti-aromatic. The structure or molecule is referred to as anti-aromatic. And the reason it's called anti-aromatic is that molecules or substructures in this situation can satisfy the other three criteria. They can be planar, fully conjugated, and cyclic, but nonetheless, they're extremely unstable. This is due purely to the pi electron effect. Let's look at a few examples to see these rules in action. It should go without saying that benzene is an aromatic molecule. It's completely planar, it's fully conjugated, since each carbon here is sp2 hybridized and has an unhybridized p orbital that participates in pi bonding. It's obviously cyclic, and the molecule has six pi electrons. This is one of those allowed numbers of pi electrons for aromaticity according to the 4n plus 2 rule. There are other ways to put six pi electrons in a cyclic array of p orbitals. One of those is shown here. Let's see if we have all the criteria for aromaticity in this molecule. 
Well, the molecule is very clearly cyclic. We would expect it to be planar based on the sp2 hybridization of all of these atoms. For the same reason, we should expect the molecule to be fully conjugated. And if we count the number of pi electrons, we get two each from the pi bonds for a total of six. And the positively charged carbon actually contributes no pi electrons to the pi system. So the total number of pi electrons here is six, and this molecule is aromatic. Here's yet another way to put six pi electrons into a cyclic array of p orbitals. Keep in mind that this carbon bears a lone pair. I'll draw it in in blue. And that lone pair will occupy a p orbital so that it can overlap with p orbitals on adjacent atoms and delocalize. For that reason, all five atoms within this structure have sp2 hybridization, including the carbon bearing the lone pair. And so the molecule is fully conjugated. It's likely to be planar because all of the atoms are trigonal planar in geometry, and it satisfies the 4n plus 2 rule. We have two pi electrons from the lone pair, two from this pi bond, and two from this pi bond. So this molecule also is aromatic. Here's a molecule that at first glance might look horribly unstable, but if we quickly run it through the criteria for aromaticity, we find out something remarkable. The molecule is cyclic. It must be planar because it's a three-membered ring. It is fully conjugated because this is a carbocation with sp2 hybridization, and these two atoms are also sp2 hybridized. And the molecule has 4n plus 2 pi electrons, where n is equal to zero. It has two pi electrons associated with the pi bond here. And so even this molecule is aromatic. Finally, we can apply these same criteria to aromatic heterocycles containing heteroatoms within the ring. This molecule is clearly cyclic. It is planar since every atom is sp2 hybridized and it is fully conjugated. This is an O2 oxygen on which one of the lone pairs is occupying a p orbital and so that oxygen is sp2 hybridized as are all of these carbon atoms. And how many pi electrons do we see within this molecule? Well, two due to the oxygen. Remember the other lone pair is in an sp2 hybrid and four due to the carbon-carbon pi bonds for a total of six. This molecule is also aromatic according to our criteria. Let's talk about anti-aromatic structures for a second, which are unique in that they're extremely unstable despite the presence of conjugation within their structures. Anti-aromatic molecules satisfy all the criteria for aromaticity except they have 4n pi electrons rather than 4n plus 2. Cyclobutadiene is the prototypical example. This molecule contains two pi bonds in conjugation, and so it contains four pi electrons. It's anti-aromatic. There are other ways to fit four pi electrons into a cyclic array of p orbitals, and here's one. The cyclopentadienyl cation has two pi bonds. There's four pi electrons right there, and the cationic carbon contributes no pi electrons. This molecule is anti-aromatic. The cyclopropenyl anion, which has a lone pair on this carbon, is also anti-aromatic. It's cyclic, it's planar, it's fully conjugated, and it's associated with four pi electrons. The pi system contains four pi electrons. Finally, let's consider this anion, which bears a lone pair on this carbon. Assuming that the molecule is planar, it's fully conjugated, and it's cyclic, and it contains eight pi electrons, two from the lone pair and two each from the pi bonds for a total of eight. What tends to happen in cases like this, in cyclooctatetraene, the neutral version of this with another double bond, as we've seen, is that they tend to pucker to avoid conjugation completely. Such molecules are best considered non-aromatic rather than anti-aromatic. A quick look at the pi molecular orbitals of these molecules helps us understand why they're so unstable. Let's take a look at the five-membered ring that's a cation here. Check out what's going on within the orbital energy diagram. The bottommost orbital looks totally fine, but look at the occupancy of the other two bonding molecular orbitals. They're both half-filled. This is an unstable situation, since each of those orbitals would rather contain an extra electron. In fact, if we added two electrons to this structure, turning this cation into an anion, now we're back to an aromatic situation with the bonding orbitals completely filled. But we take away two of those electrons to get back to a situation where the total pi electron count is a multiple of four, and we're back into anti-aromatic territory. It's these empty slots in the bonding molecular orbitals that really creates the problem. Here are the molecular orbitals for this seven-membered anion here, and notice the situation now. Now not only do we have unpaired electrons in these two orbitals, but these two orbitals are anti-bonding. They're above the zero line in energy. And so we've got unpaired electrons and anti-bonding electrons 
a horrible situation from a stability perspective.